my favorite, if I really have to choose, is the nudie brand. So the nudie <gasps> yes. brand, it's a little sea sounds slug. Dirty. Sounds dirty. And they're also called sea goddesses. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's spoke to Katie, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like in my next life I would like to be reborn as a as a sea goddess, please and thank you. Welcome to Electric Enthusiasm, the podcast where we celebrate unironic enthusiasm. I'm a massive enthusiast about what we're gonna talk about today, but I have zero knowledge outside of fun facts, Katie Cobalt. And I'm Alexander Kyoto, and I I could be any marine animal. I would be a sea otter, because sea otters are awesome. They oh, are no. so good. No, they're not. I'll tell <laughs> you why <laughs> later. They're not. But they have a favorite they're the rock. assholes of the sea. Uh, I'm sorry, orca whales are the assholes of the sea. <laughs> oh, we're going to get in a fight today. It's going to be great. Can I do a new intro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm Alexander Kill, and I'm here to have all my bubbles burst. Oh. <laughs> it's okay because sea otters are cute because they have a favorite rock. That's my favorite thing about sea otters. They have a little pouch and they'll keep a little rock and that's adorable. And they sleep holding hands. Yes, because they have significant otters. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to fight you on this, and, yo. And you then have there's to. a little thing called the baby dolphin. We'll circle back to that. <laughs> so excited to circle back to that. Alex, before we circle back to that, how do these episodes work? <laughs> Well, in most episodes, one of us will present a topic that they love, but that the other host knows little or nothing about, and then try their hardest to spread their enthusiasm to the other host and to the listeners. But as you've probably figured out in this episode, we have a guest uh, who's super excited about something that we know very little about. We also have the moment of meta where we nerd out about enthusiasm itself and talk a little bit about why enthusiasm matters and how you can live a more enthusiastic life. Because the world needs more enthusiasm, and you should share yours with ours on our website, electricenthusiasm.com, or our Instagram, electricenthusiasm. And tell us what you're excited about these days. You could even play an old, send us an email at hello at electricenthusiasm.com. And this episode, we have a guest. Yes. Alex, would you like to introduce our guest? Because I believe she is your friend first. Yes. But I fully intend to be her friend by the end of this episode. <laughs> We're all friends in this podcast. You know that, <laughs> That's true. Our guest this episode is amazing. Uh, this is Jo Kuhlman Rasmussen. Welcome, Jo. Thank you. There are many ways to be enthusiastic, right? You might like a band and listen to their songs a lot, and that's fine. Uh, you could love, let's say, hypothetically, theoretically, <laughs> a series of sci-fi books, and then maybe go on and on and on about them on your podcast, uh, like we've done over the last couple episodes. What? <laughs> um, or you could be so enthusiastic about something that you quit your job, to go to pursue an education and a career in that field in your 40s. Uh, and that's what Yo has done. And, and that's just one of many reasons why Yo is awesome. Now, Yo is really enthusiastic about marine animals. And she started an education in, in animal care caretaking. Yeah, uh, or zookeeper. Z basically, you want to be a zookeeper. Yeah. Mm. You started that last year. Yep. You went to school in Denmark for that. And then you, uh, so tough, so tough. Yeah. Had to do a three-month internship in the Galapagos Islands. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Life yeah. is so terrible. Yeah. It's so yeah. hard. Uh, <laughs> Yo's Instagram feed from that period was basically unbearable. Uh, <laughs> basically. Like, it was all uh, sea lions and hammerhead sharks and tortoises, oh, obviously. So, cool. yeah, so, so annoying. Yeah. yeah I, I hated that. You're interested in animals, but specifically marine animals, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. I mean, all animals are cool, but marine all animals. All animals are yeah. cool. Beside the sea otters, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go now. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about marine animals. Uh, yeah. Katie, uh, what do you? What, let's check our mm. the level of knowledge here. What do you know about marine animals, and how much of it do you know and hear in, in David Attenborough's voice? <laughs> I love animals. I don't know if you guys had this experience growing up, but like, you know, like the Saturday morning cartoon narrative, like you wake up early on a Saturday morning, you sit in front of the TV and you watch cartoons. I didn't do that. I watched Animal Planet and National Geographic. 
Uh, I love animal documentaries. I love learning about animals and their evolutionary traits. I have an encyclopedic knowledge of various animals' mating habits. I love learning about how they have sex. I think it's fascinating. That is an episode. That is an yeah, actual episode I've been right saying, there. Yeah, I should do animal it sex. next week. It's so fun. Um, I love animals. I, and I am deeply jealous of you in this moment. Um, <laughs> to flex, I have a, a narwhal tattoo. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, I, I love animals. All of my facts are like fun facts. And that's kind of like where my knowledge is. It's like general. Yes, it's, we're, yes. We're bound to be friends, yo. This is like inevitable. So I have a like, very like surface level fun facts knowledge of a broad range of animals. Love animals. Love studying them. I think what you've done is so freaking cool. And I'm like, hmm, this seems like a path that I could fall <laughs> yes. down. Very interesting. And so I'm very excited about this week's episode. Awesome. Excellent. And yourself, Alex? Yeah, that's it's a good question. Uh, I've watched a lot of those nature documentaries as a kid, right? David Attenborough, Steve Irving. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, crikey. Yeah. Uh, of course, crikey. he was killed by a marine animal. So th- that could a that stingray? could be the asshole. Well, no, it was <laughs> no. actually Steve Irving's own fault. So yeah. it wasn't the animal's fault. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I think I have the same knowledge as everybody else who's watched TV ever. Uh, yeah, so uh, so I'm excited too. We're gonna talk about marine animals. Watch TV ever. Um, I'm feeling a lot of pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to hear about your enthusiasm. That's what we're here yes. for. Yeah. Yes. So uh, let's go facts first here, right? Mm-hmm. Is there a formal definition of marine animals? Is it animals that live in the sea or near the sea? What about like a uh, an albatross that lives? Yeah. You know, what what what's the definition? So there is a very short, sweet definition of marine animals. So it's any of numerous animals inhabiting the sea. The end. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty clear. So we're all kind of, okay. So it's animals living in the sea, but also near or above the sea in that sense. So speaking of albatross, so you can have the birds and the reptiles also in that equation of being a marine animal, because if they spent 50% of their lives or more in the marine environment, then they are in the classification of marine animals. So you've got penguins, the large seabirds, the iguanas from the Galapagos Islands, which are fucking awesome. Oh, sorry, can I say fucking on this? Oh, 100%, uh, yes, you can. You Good. fucking can. Okay, awesome. Fuck yeah. <laughs> because they live of eating of the rocks in the sea, so they're in the sea all the time. And fun fact about iguanas, they have salt glands, so they drink a lot of the salt water when they eat seaweed and, and what's on the rocks, and then... They'll go on land and then they'll sit there and warm up in the sun and then the head starts popping and then you go, oh, oh got to run because then they sneeze out the salt. That's how they kind of... <laughs> and they, and I mean, it can go pretty far. So normally the rule with animals, you never stand behind an animal, but for, with the iguanas, you never stand in front of the uh, iguanas. Unless you that, want a salt water bath. That sounds deeply uncomfortable to sneeze out it salt is. water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but many uh, marine animals not living directly in the sea, they have salt glands, and, and they do that. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. First first fun fact about animals first already. Fact, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so cool. What would be like the least, like the thing that fits that category, but something that people might not have considered, like the least expected marine animal? Good question. I don't yes, know. Yes, we have good questions. Go ask. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> Well, I think what most people confuse is what's a fish, what's a shark, when is it an octopus, when is it a crustacean and and shellfish. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, areas you can kind of go into. I wanted to become a marine biologist. I didn't. But after seeing the big blue, Le Grand Bleu, in uh, I think 88, 89, that kind of sparked my interest. But then as an 18-year-old girl... I didn't want to spend six years uh, studying to become a marine biologist, so I, I jumped on a, I jumped on a bus to Paris, and then the rest is history. <laughs> and that's why I'm kind of doing this now. But I mean, you have classifications within the marine animals, yeah. So, so, so you have the corals, you have the marine mammals, which is the largest one with 130 species, and then you have the fish, you have the sea turtles, the reptiles, the seabirds, 
the sharks and rays, and then you have the whole crustaceans and other shellfish and the the octopus. So that's kind of how you divide and conquer the sea in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very You've fun. just name dropped about a thousand and one species of all <laughs> of this marine uh, biology. Which animal is your favorite? God, I knew you were gonna ask that. And <laughs> how can you? I mean, you can't. Uh, what? Um, okay. How about? How about? I'm gonna. I'm gonna make it a bit more specific. Help you out. Which no. animal do you find the most interesting to study? Yes. So I'm a dive master, and I've been diving a lot around the world. And marine animals, come on, they're really freaking awesome. My favorite, if I really have to choose, and I kind of put on my diving goggles. Is the nudibranch? So the nudibranch, <gasps> yes. it's a little sea sounds slug. Dirty. Sounds dirty. It is. They're so cute. Not They're dirty. so cute, though. They're so cute. They're so, so it's pretty. A little sea slug, and they have the lung on the back. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is like the the diving sign. So you kind of have a finger, and then you have the lung on on top, and then they have two little receptors. So and they it kind of goes like oh like oh like tree in the wind yeah underneath the sea. <laughs> And then they have smell receptors, yeah? So they smell their food with the receptors. I mean, come on. How awesome is that? So you have the lung on the back. You can smell your food. It's a sea slug. I mean, and they're beautiful. They're They're absolutely beautiful. And, okay, fun fact, they're um, uh, hermaphrodites. Oh, God, I can't say that. Yeah, thank you. I got Um, you. Because they move slow, yeah? So it's a sea slug, so they move slow. So... Okay, speaking of um, mating rituals and sex habits with weird creatures. <laughs> so, so happy the, right the, now. The nudibranchs, they move so slow that they, when they cross each other, they just have sex. Because, I mean, you never know when you kind of cross another one, yeah? <laughs> I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> they mate with everyone. Yeah, I love it. Also, I love it. Also, uh, it's got to be super easy because they're they're they don't have any clothes on. They're nudie pranks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Alex, oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh god. Yeah. Okay, and last fun fact about nudie pranks, then I'll stop. No, don't. This is fantastic. <laughs> they produce. Hang on, hang on to your socket. They produce solar power. What? How? Yeah, yeah. Because by eating corals that have a specific thing in them, they produce solar power, so they sustain their own energy. That's so freaking cool. It is. That is amazing. That is amazing. Wow. Yes. Nudie brings. Yeah. Just the name. They're so pretty. And you know, nudie brings, they're also called sea goddesses. Oh my God. <laughs> that's that's folks with Katie, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like... In my next life, I would like to be reborn as a, as a sea goddess. Please and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you only have a lifespan between one and five years, but okay. Then I'll come back again. It's oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, nudie brings up there as one of the favorite animals or yeah. and marine animals. Well, I have many. Yeah. Uh, I, but I mean, normally people tend to go for the large marine um, animals or mammals in that sense because they're very beautiful and gracious and you go by big whales or manta rays manta rays are pretty cool because i mean okay that's a long story but they can kind of funnel (laughs) their food into with the fins and they can go and they jump out of the water like the dolphins do and it has purpose and they 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 form a line so they kind of um channel the food down It's, it's brilliant i mean yeah so but yeah no i really i'm really really into the tiny stuff because it's normally the small animals that have like the craziest yeah mating thing rituals or they produce solar power i mean come on that's so dope how awesome is that <laughs> can i show you the most beautiful thing i've seen underwater yes your own reflection oh my god i was just about to say <laughs> <laughs> okay let me share the second most beautiful thing i've seen underwater <laughs> So I was snorkeling in, in Curaçao in the Caribbean, and I see this school of a squid. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they're about 10 centimeters long, uh, about 20 of them, mm-hmm. uh, just standing still in the water, changing color in sync. Dope. So they go white, black, white, black, white, black, like instantaneously, basically, the whole school in sync. Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea how they, how they coordinate that. But it was so beautiful. That's... Squids are awesome. Yeah. Octopuses are awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah. I love octopi. 
<laughs> um, oh my gosh. Okay, so those are some of the favorite animals. Laid on me. Uh, yo, what what's wrong with sea lions? Oh, sorry, uh, sea, otters. sea otters. Sea otters. Okay. Burst my bubble. Yes, uh, I'm gonna burst Kill your my dream. But I mean, I love to talk about sea otters because most people kind of go, "Oh, they're so cute. They're they so hold cute. hands and they have a little pouch with the rock." It's like, no, they're assholes. They're fucking assholes. But they're, so uh, really, say they're cute assholes. Well, y- yeah, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we can be cute assholes too. So, <laughs> so. Sea otters, in short, and if you're a little bit squeamish, uh, this is a trigger warning. So <laughs> like, maybe like fast forward two minutes, because this involves baby dolphins. So sea otters, assholes as they are, they catch baby dolphins or smaller animals, and then they basically fuck them to death. And then they keep the corpse of the baby dolphin for a couple of days and then they keep on fucking it until it kind of dissolves and goes away what not only rapist but also necrophiliacs yeah and pedophilic necrophilia but those uh, but but, 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 but that that then would be the male sea otters (laughs) no they all participate and they keep yeah they drown the baby dolphin together okay Okay, my thing is, like, animals can't be assholes because they don't have a sense of morality. They don't know what's wrong. Uh, so I disagree with that point. Uh, secondly, is it – the function of that, is that a dominance display? Is it a way of bonding as a team together? Is that their idea of a great team building exercise? Like, is there – do we understand the purpose behind this activity? Because it's really messed up. Um, <laughs> as with many other animals, I mean – we can only guess, yeah? So we can't ask them. But scientists think that it's just for fun. Gross. <laughs> That's why I kind of think they're assholes, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if, you know, if maybe maybe they don't all do it. It's like hashtag not all sea otters. Not all sea no. otters. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's it's certain species, yeah. So it's, it's not yeah. all of them because <clears throat> not all of them have access to cute little baby dolphins. I'm legit terrified to ask this question. Please tell me narwhals are still cool. They're still cool. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Absolutely still cool. So don't don't worry. You don't have a tattoo of an asshole. Thank um, okay. God. Yeah. <laughs> what about ri- river otters? Are they okay? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure if they can get their little paws on something. <laughs> I, I did it. hear about, uh, there. apparently there were gang wars between river otters in Singapore. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's fantastically hilarious. There was a, yeah. a river where this colony moved in and then another colony came in and they were like yeah. fighting each other and killing each other left and right. And yeah. Yeah. That's why normally you don't see a large number of sea otters in the zoos together. Mm. Okay. You can't. Mm-hmm. No. That's I think like it's like four or six <clears throat> maximum together. And then you have to kind of divide the aquarium. Yeah. Wow. Is there a specific, because like groups of animals have very interesting names. Is there a particular name for a group of otters? Like you have a pod of dolphins, a school of fish. Parliament of ravens. Parliament. Yes. A congress of gorillas. Yeah, is well, there a murder word? Of, murder of crows. Crows. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know. Moment of Google. Moment of Google. But Collective. And then we have like the, the music going. Term for <laughs> otters. <laughs> Yeah. What is a group of otters called? A romp. A romp. <laughs> That's Aww. great. A the romp. collective nouns for otters are bevy, family, lodge, or romp. I like the romp though. Romp. A mm. romp of otters. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I feel like I feel like I feel like I've lost the dream here. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't. Yeah. They I mean, still hold hands. They, they hold, they hands, hold they, hands. They're still true. cute. Yeah. And they're really fun to go and watch if you go to, to a zoo or an aquarium. And they're really fun. And you go watch them getting fed. And they're easy to train. And so, yeah. There's there's a lot of good things. And then you can just kind of collectively ignore what some others do. Okay. Well, we did talk about on the show, it's okay to be enthusiastic about something problematic. Acknowledge your problematic yes. behavior, yeah. but you can still be enthusiastic about it. So, Alex, you can still be enthusiastic for sea <laughs> otters. Yes. It's okay. It's one of our enthusiasms. It's okay. I'll, I'll be selectively enthusiastic. <laughs> That's the vibe. <laughs> Excellent.
So favorite marine animals, we talked about that. Uh, weirdest, did you ask a weirdest marine animal already? Did we talk about that? No, we no. didn't. Okay. Oh, there's so many also. Uh, but I stumbled across one. I have not seen it because it lives like 5,000 feet down where there's no sunlight. There's no nothing. And we would get <laughs> squished. Um, but it, I, it's because of the name. Yeah. So it's Kiwa, the god of shellfish it's a crab what <laughs> again here we go with the names yeah i mean oh, how wonderful so is it to discover a species and you you look at it and it's so ugly and then you go oh it's the god of shellfish come on that's awesome <laughs> i want to find a species and then name it something really ridiculous that, yeah please do because i feel like as well like biologists generally have pretty excellent names for things and then in physics you're like well it's a black uh, it's a hole. It's a black hole. It's, it's a black hole. <laughs> it's smaller than the other thing, and it's re- it's a red dwarf. Like, yeah, yeah. and then you have the god of shellfish. Like, I feel yeah. like biology comes through with the names. Yes. Yeah. Has anybody read the Far Side comics? Yes. No. Okay, so uh, those were really big uh, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, they're hilarious. Uh, so I was you, not alive then, potentially. Exactly. <laughs> uh, before your time. Uh, really funny. Uh, <laughs> Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, the author, Gary Larson, a lot of his comics were kind of nerdy. So he was very popular with scientists of all kinds. Yes. And then at one point, he gets a letter from a biologist who wants to name a new species after him. That's so cool. And, and, and he just wants to warn him that it's not something cute. It's a form of lice that lives only on <laughs> owls. Oh. Yeah. And these are actually so specific that you can find out what species this owl is from what species of lice it carries. Uh, wow. And Gary Larson is that that's the biggest honor of my entire <laughs> life. Please do. And there is now a species of louse called the something something Gary Larsoni. Oh, nice. Something similar happened with the soldier fly. There's a soldier fly that was recently discovered in Australia, which mm-hmm. is named after RuPaul the drag queen. Oh, <laughs> because it's an iridescent fly with quote unquote legs for days. Oh God, snap, <laughs> and honey! So it's called uh, Opoluma. Opoluma, I think is how you pronounce it. RuPaul, oh, um, and it's like an iridescent, like rainbow-ish fly, which is named for a drag queen, which is excellent. That is excellent. So cool. Okay, but do you want to know why I kind of picked the the god of shellfish? Yes. Like the crab that lives 5,000 feet below the, the, the water surface. So it's completely white. I mean, it doesn't need colors because it's completely dark down there. It has huge claws, but it has fur on the claws. What? Yeah. Wow. And the fur has a specific trait. It has a bacteria on it to detoxify the food that it catches. The fur, it's so big that the food kind of get tangled into the fur because the crab is blind. Also, because why? You don't need eyes. And then it just have this fur that detoxify whatever comes in and then it just eats it. I mean, how clever is that? That is pretty. How how big are they? Oh, God, like this. They're not that big. Whoa, that's bigger than I thought they were going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to Google that later, but yeah. So, So, I mean, again... These creatures are awesome, yeah? That is so weird. That is so weird. Yeah. But also another weird animal, and this is the only animal in the marine animal kingdom that does this, um, the seahorse, yeah? So we all know kind of how the seahorse, it looks like a horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that hints the name. But they mate for life, which is not a common thing. They're monogamous. Not that you have to do that to mate for life. Um, (laughs) Okay, moving on. Um, (laughs) And then they're among the only species on Earth where the male bears the the unborn young. Yeah. Yeah? So the the female deposits the eggs in the pouch on the belly of the the male seahorse, and then he fertilizes them, and then he carries it. um, And then... And they spew out, right? And then they spew out around two, three thousand eggs. That little tiny thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. And a seahorse is a fish, just to state. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that uh, in the script, uh, Katie put in a picture of RuPaul. And oh. then the, and then the, oh, the RuPaul fly. The soldier yes. fly. 
Oh my God. That's so accurate. Oh Isn't my it? God. That's awesome. I love RuPaul. Okay. Who doesn't? Yeah, um, who doesn't? I know. So something that I'm really curious about, you went to study in the Galapagos and you went to specifically study Galapagos turtles, correct? Mm-hmm. Torturous. So, yeah. Torturous. Um, so when I hear about the study of marine animals, I often hear about the Galapagos turtles. Why are these animals so important, so iconic to the study of marine biology? And and just before we do that, the difference between turtles and tortoises. Yeah. So yes, the turtles cause... are the, the sea turtles mm-hmm. and the tortoises are the tortoises uh, on land. So turtles okay. have fins. Turtles and tortoise, go into the water. Tortoise. Turtles have fins yeah. and, and tortoises have legs and can walk on land. Walk, yeah. Better, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, why are the Galapagos tortoise? Uh, man, that why is that word so confusing in my mouth? Uh, why why are they so important to the study of marine biology? Not necessarily just for marine biology. I mean, I got an opportunity to spend three months at the Galapagos Islands, and the the, the biggest tortoise in the world lives there, which is weird on these small islands. Um, <laughs> But actually, they're endangered, yeah? So I was um, assisting in a, a breeding program to ensure the, the survival of the species. It's pretty clear. I mean, it's, it's us, the humans. It's our fault that they're having a hard time. But on the other side, they're not the brightest animals in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so they need all the help they can get, yeah? Um, but an animal that can live up to 180 maybe 200 years they have the slowest metabolism in the world that's why they get so old Um, and then they get up to what 500 600 kilos and it's it's just amazing and then they have like the tiniest brain (laughs) (laughs) but you know what one thing that really surprised me they have personality Mm. so there were over 800 tortoises in the breeding center, most of them small. And then when they um, become uh, sexually mature around 25, <laughs> it takes 25 <sighs> years. Yeah. The first 25 years to just kind of eat and do nothing, sleep. <laughs> It's a, dream, um, it's a dream right there. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, not a, a bad yeah, life. <laughs> not bad. We had uh, enclosures with the adults where we bred the adults in that sense. And they... They're all different. And that was like mind blowing for me to discover that they have personalities Mm. or traits or what you would call it. I mean, in an animal with that small of a brain. But um, (laughs) so, yeah, for for me, it was very interesting. Well, besides it being at the Galapagos Islands, but also, I mean, working with the species that are endangered and seeing how this affects the, the life on the island to try and educate the the people on the Galapagos Islands not to eat them anymore because this has been a a normal part of their diet. And I mean, pirates, that's how they kind of discovered you could eat the the tortoise. They they put them on the ships because the adults can go for a year without food and water, yeah? So you have a ready snack on your pirate ship at any time. So, I mean, to, to look at animals... And us and, and and how we kind of can coexist in, in a world where we have to take care of the environment, of each other and everything. That was really cool to be part of that program. So that's why I think it's important to go places where you work either with rescue animals or endangered species to uh, give a little bit back, I think. Mm. So, so the Galapagos tortoises don't go in the water? No. Nope. No, they can't swim? or No, no. they hang out in water if they find the lake or okay. something they they really enjoyed the lagoons and the enclosures um and some of them really enjoyed like having a spa day when i cleaned the lagunas and then they would come and then i would spray <laughs> them with water and, like, oh. and and when you say different personalities what were yeah. some of the differences what were uh, did you have, did you have a favorite tortoise yes so <laughs> i named it billy well it was called billy or number 49 because they have numbers <laughs> And Billy was raised and hand fed at the breeding center. So Billy was the only tortoise that would come up and and not hide in the shell when you came too close. So I could pet Billy and he would follow me around. And especially if I was watering or hosing down the platforms or the lagunas, he would come up and and he would like put his head on my knee. Awesome. 
That's so cute. And then afterwards, if I was not wearing gloves, then if you've ever pet a tortoise, well, you shouldn't because it's not allowed in the wild. So don't do that. Um, you smell really bad because their skin smelled really bad. Why? So, I, it's bacteria. Okay. Yeah, and parasites. So. Yum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then one of them bit me. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming very slowly. But you know what? It came as a big surprise. So I was standing there hosing down a platform and then my right arm was just hanging down to my leg. And I was listening to a podcast because, I mean, you have a lot of hours where you clean shit and do whatever. It's, it's not like a very sexy job. yeah. Um, and then I was just standing there looking. Na, 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 and then suddenly this little bastard, well, it's not little 500 kilos, comes up <laughs> And you know, the beak is like really strong. They don't have teeth, but it's like a hammer. yeah. And then it just took my little finger because it thought it was food. If they think everything is food, yeah. And I small got, brains, small brains. Yeah, I, I, and then it bit me. And then I also got cornered because they're quite fast when you give them food. So I have a scar on my hand because I got cornered between a wall and the uh, like 10, 500, 600 kilos torturers and a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a dangerous job. Wow. You know what What, what uh, marine animals scares the shit out of me? No. Snapping turtles. <gasps> yes, yeah. that's true. And they're, they're freakishly fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I agree. Don't do not do it, kids. What I'd like to know. So, yes. Um, so you basically changed career paths mm-hmm. and started this full-time thing, studying and doing these internships. And everybody else in your class is like 18 years old. <laughs> well, there are some in the middle of the, their 20s. And then there's me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and here's you. with You have already have a successful career in a very in HR, very different field. Uh, what made you do it? And what's, what's it like? Where did you find the courage to do this? And, and, and how is it to, to suddenly follow your enthusiasm like this? I can only admire people who do it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do it? What's it like? It's awesome. To, I mean, <laughs> screen shorts, it's, it's awesome. So, yeah, but I mean, as I, I said, I, I, I wanted to do this since I watched The Big Blue in 88, 89. And then life just took a turn. I've, I've been doing something else for a long, long time. But I've been like keeping up with the marine world because I've been um, diving for, for, for many, many years. And then um, at some point, like two years ago, I came out from a, a long and hard treatment for cancer and I kind of like, okay, so I basically have almost half of my working life left. And then I kind of thought like, would, can I see myself do what I'm doing now for the rest of my working life? I could, I, I enjoy my life. I have my own company. It's fine. And all of that. But then I kind of thought, Hmm but I really want to do something else. (laughs) So I called the school and I said, listen, I'm in the middle of the forties. Is it completely out of the question for me to start a new education and career? And they were like, no, 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 we like grownups. Okay, cool. (laughs) Um, So I kind of just decided to do it. Yeah. I've been doing, I've been doing what I want for a long time. So it's not for me. It's not, I can see when people look at me, that it's a big change. I don't feel it as a big change when I kind of, it's just, I just did it and <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm absolutely on the correct path. Yeah. I'm so excited. This is so wonderful to hear about as well. I think particularly nowadays, a lot of people because of COVID are reconsidering their paths and what to yeah. do. And for a lot of us, our work kind of dried up maybe a little. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's really cool to hear from somebody who took that plunge and was like, Nah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to go follow the thing that I've always wanted to do. And so it's really yeah. cool to hear from you on that front. But also, I mean, I mean, I, I kind of joke about it, but I've been working in HR and organizational development and, and for, for many, many years. And I'm kind of a little bit tired of working with people. So now I want to work with animals. <laughs> <laughs> I can under- I can see that animals are amazing. They're so animals fascinating. are amazing, and of course, I mean, I'm going to be part of a of, of a zookeeper team or an aquarium team. I've gotten an internship in in the biggest uh, aquarium in northern Europe, so I'm going to wow. start working there. Um, so, of course, I mean, I can take all of my experience from the other life and kind of put into that. So it's not like, oh my god, my whole career has been a waste. I don't <laughs> see it as that. It, it's no. it's a good combination, yeah. Um, but animals are cool and it's just fun to work with them. Yeah. 
Okay, I have a I have an interesting question. We've been talking a lot about how different animals have adapted to the biomes they live in. So like we talked about salt glands or having lungs on your back. Um, is there a specific evolutionary trait or quality that you wish you personally had? Yes. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> because I would love to have the body of a dolphin. So what dolphins do is they can dive down like with one intake of air and they have collapsible lungs. So they don't get the decompression sickness that, that we do. So what they do is they, they collapse the lungs and then they can expel a small volume of the gas and air and then they take up oxygen and then remove the carbon dioxide and then they avoid the exchange of nitrogen. So they don't get sick like we do, yeah? So mm. we would die if we tried and do what and and basically that I learned that from the big blue, yeah. So we have this free diver that goes down and what he I mean, it's not it's not real, it's a movie, yeah, but <laughs> I know that. I can tell the difference. But what really fascinated me was that the dolphins also direct the blood. Uh, and then they only sustain the vital organs. Yeah. Imagine if we could do that. Imagine if we could decide with one gulp of air to go down, dive, and we would have collapsible lungs. We wouldn't get decompression sickness. And then we would just like sustain our vital organs. And then we can go and have fun. And then we can just come up and go, oh, hello. <laughs> I mean, what? That's awesome. That yeah? is yeah. so awesome. Absolutely. I also love how quickly you answer that question. Like, I was trying to think of, like, more tricky questions to ask you. And, like, it took me a long time to think of that question. Honestly, I'm a little annoyed. But also, it's very cool that you were like, yes, dolphin body. I want dolphin lungs. I do. In case you're wondering, my answer to that question is I want chromatophores. As someone who does a lot of makeup and extreme makeup things... <sighs> How much faster would my life be if I just had chromatophores I could change yes. up on will? Because um, yeah. I did think about this for a long time. I was thinking, <laughs> like, polar bears have fiber optic fur. That's pretty fucking cool. That's really cool. Um, I also really like the idea of uh, blubber because I don't like being cold ever. I would love to just be snuggly the whole time. That can that can um, be done, Katie. That that's that's humanly achievable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I realized. For my future as a drag performer, I need chromatophores. That's what I need. I'm trying to think what what marine animal trait I might want, uh, like the whale song, being able to cool. communicate. Uh, but we're kind of doing that right now, right? So yeah. another thing that I thought of was sonar or echolocation. Yeah, like dolphins Again, have that. Dolphins. Very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to produce small amounts of electricity. You could zap people. Oh yeah, so I'm going with that one. Yes, about that yes. power. <laughs> I you really could do like that. the electrical eel. I, yeah. It, that's an awesome animal also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. You could have bioluminescence. Yeah. You could glow oh. when you move around. That'd mm -hmm. be pretty excellent. I love that. Very yeah. good for dancing. You could be like a glowing dancer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone would be asked. The, the world would line up to dance with you <laughs> if you were glowing while you moved. <laughs> Or the ability awesome. to create bubbles so you kind of catch your food so you don't have to, like, do anything else mm. to get your food. Or the mantis shrimp. Like, oh, basically yeah. Basically, grow yeah. so fast, they cavitate. The, the cavitation bubbles. Oh, my God, they're beautiful also. Yeah, I've, I've watched them stun their uh, food. Yeah, no, that's, that's really awesome. Um, I was diving in Sipadan in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and I saw a mantis shrimp. I was exceptionally lucky to see it because he had his head poking out. And I and I saw him and he ran in and I was very excited. I I had a like an underwater. It's not a piece of paper, but it's a bit of plastic that you can write mm -hmm. on. And yeah. I wrote mantis in all caps <laughs> underlined. And I was like, guys. Uh, and then we all basically just swum around the hole, but not like directly in front of it. We were all like sort of waiting, hoping, begging he'd pop his head back yes. out again. But of course he didn't because he had six divers being like, mantis, yeah. mantis. <laughs> He's kind of lying there going, what's going on? What, yeah. Why are they looking at me for? Like, fuck off. You're interrupting my dinner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also have 13 rods and cones, so they can see a lot more of the spectrum of light than we can. So that's another mm. possible trait you might want. So, uh, I mean, I have a lot of fun facts about animals. <laughs> I feel like... I like it. <laughs> 
I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. I've, of all the excellent choices you have laid out, I think I am gonna go with shocking people. Mm. Able to generate like a what is it, 400 volts of electricity? At just you know, exactly. at any that would be so useful. Yes. You know, you're standing in line, and there's just this guy annoying you and hit ahead of you, just zapping. Mm. Nobody would know, right? Because nobody would suspect. He's just lying there in convulsions. It's a new superpower. I I could. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I'm uh, I'm sensing a new Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sensing this is the villain origin story. I don't feel like this is a hero. This is the villain right here. What? Yep. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? <laughs> I would use my powers only for good. Like, Yo's picked a power so she can go diving. I picked a power so I can do drag. And you're like, I'm going to zap the dude in front of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but only only people who are annoying or just if I thought it would be fun. <laughs> the dangerous slope you're on <laughs> no, there. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> so, uh, yo, yeah. you right now you're back in school. In a couple of months, you are starting another internship mm-hmm. in Hirtshals in Denmark at at, uh, at the northern uh, Oceanarium. Oceanarium, yeah. biggest the North uh, Sea Oceanarium, biggest aquarium in Northern Europe. Yeah. Um, so, what are your thoughts on zoos and aqua parks and that kind of thing? Necessary evil? Uh, good for education? Uh, what do you think? Well. I wish that we hadn't started. So that that would kind of be the perfect world that we didn't keep animals in captivity. We do, and we've been doing that for for many, many years. So we shouldn't make new ones. Uh, we should not take new animals and put them in captivity. But since we have them there and we can't release them because we've now trained them and we've taken away their survival skills, uh, and for some, we're taking a, a away like um, the the natural inhabitant and and like the natural way of them to to survive. So now we should use it for good, yeah. So instead of like you sapping people, so we should use the, the our powers for good, Alexander. It would be good. It would be more than good. It would be awesome. It would be awesome. Uh, so for we, me, at yeah. least. So we should use it for educational purposes, yeah? And we should use it uh, for breeding purposes. We should use it to make sure that endangered species are not endangered anymore. Um, But, I mean, my heart breaks when I see the the large orcas uh, in in small ocean tanks and, and the large marine animals, but also the small ones, yeah? I mean, who are we to keep? Um, animals in in captivity so i think we're seeing more and more and i think that's why i'm also really excited to start at the oceanarium is that they have a great collaboration with a large science park so a lot of companies and the the danish technical university so they're doing research on the waters around the area in here that's the northern part of of jutland Um, and i'm going to get involved in a lobster project so they're going to breed lobsters to survive in that part of the world so we don't go fishing for lobsters outside and then endangering them in in that sense so more and more oceanarians and zoos are joining worldwide networks where you exchange animals to ensure that they're not become distinct or endangered that's really cool and do yeah. you think there's educational purpose for educating the public about marine biology and hopefully inspiring the next generation of marine biologists, 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 biologists. I English, <laughs> I English real good. Um, <laughs> it's going to be part of my day to day also. So I'm going to be doing feeding sessions and then you like educate the public that comes and especially the, the schools. And, and I hope to just be able to give some sort of uh, knowledge or interest or spark an interest in in the in the wonderful world of marine animals. So I, for me, that's a big part of my job, also. Definitely. So you're so you're saying you're gonna spread your enthusiasm? I am. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Roll credits. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I have one. I have one final question. Though. Okay. So we talked about uh, best animal. Uh, mm-hmm. Best marine animal, the nudibranch. The nudibranch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, the that's sea on. goddess. We talked weirdest was the the the, the slug thing with the fur the on the goddess cross, shellfish. Maybe. It's the it's the, the goddess, goddess, goddess shellfish. Goddess shellfish. Yeah, uh, we crab. talked worst animals, obviously sea otters. Mm-hmm. Uh, question: mm-hmm. Most delicious marine animal. Like delicious in eating. Tasty. Yeah. Oh, 
Do you still eat seafood? Well, now that you studied marine biology. Yes, I do. Mm. A grilled lobster with butter. That's pretty yeah. excellent. It's an excellent choice. Yeah. Yeah. But like, a, a, not a lobster that's endangered. <laughs> are there endangered lobsters? Yes. Okay. There are. Yeah. Which ones? Where? Where, where I, in the world? I are can't or? remember okay. the, the names, but yeah, that's why we do the breeding also. Yeah. Yeah. And will you get to eat the? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be weird because you kind of grow them in, in small apartments because you have to keep them separate because otherwise they fight each other to the death. What? Wow. Okay. So it would be weird to eat an animal that I kind of bred. Sure. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So what about you? I, I'm, I'm Lobsters. Lobsters yeah. are delicious. Um, yeah. I was going to say the first time I ever saw a mantis shrimp was on a dinner table. I've eaten man like it's very common to eat mantis shrimp in Hong Kong. Yeah. What? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw them really I, when I was in Hong Kong. I saw them also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I was gonna say like excellent eating, also fantastic to study, but delicious is mantis shrimp. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. They oh, taste yeah. like lobster or crab or no? They taste like, like chicken, lobster. Alex. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit like lobster. Their text the the texture is a bit more tender. It's a mm -hmm. little bit less uh, chewy, and it's normally served covered in deep fried garlic, uh, which is never <gasps> a bad thing. No, never, <laughs> never. A oh bad my thing. god! Mm. And like yeah. it, as is typical in Hong Kong, like particularly if you go to like the outlying islands or like Sai Kung, uh, freshness is is key. So yeah. you have like a little sad aquarium in the restaurant where there's yeah. all the animals in like little glass boxes and they're swimming into their life. And then you, you point at the ones you want to eat. You're like, I'll take that one. Um, and so they, they are really delicious. I will say. Yeah. Uh, speaking of freshness, have you seen uh, the movie called old boy? Not yet. A Korean movie. No. Okay. There is a scene uh, where the main character eats a live octopus, a little one. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Is a thing in Korea. Uh, they're not fully alive. Yeah. So they. What take does that the, mean? They're they half the, dead. They take the recently dead. So they very they they kill the octopus. They cut them in small pieces. They are completely raw, but because they put soy sauce or salty liquid on top of the tentacles, it causes them to keep moving and twitching, yeah. uh, and for the suckers to keep go moving. So when you eat them, you have to chew them exceptionally well. Otherwise, otherwise they can get stuck in oh your throat no. because of the suckers. And that's, so, that's what he does in the movie. He st uh, st uh, sticks the head in his mouth and oh. then all the tentacles are like writhing around his mouth. Yeah, and then he, typically uh, not eating like that. Typically, they're eat they're, they cut them into bite-sized pieces because they're encouraging you to not die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he goes, he goes all in. On Ew. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. No, I think I'm going to skip that one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I'd try it just out of curiosity. I would chew it exceptionally well. I do not like death. I've, I've done a really good job of being alive, uh, and I'd like to keep going on that front if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I I feel you on that one. Alrighty, do alrighty. We, uh, do we have any uh, any final questions, Katie? Anything we'd um, like to know about? Uh... I mean, I had a question about animal mating habits. If you had any more interesting ones to add to my collection, but I feel like we've covered that pretty exceptionally well already in this episode. Um, yeah, because like one of my favorite animal mating habits, I think we'll, if we do an episode of this, I'll talk in more detail, is the sneaky fucking cuttlefish theory. Um, uh, and what? that happens to be a marine animal. Um, and that's my favorite, I think, of them all. Eels. Yeah. Eels will swim out into the ocean somewhere. And nobody really knows where. And that's when they mate and then they come back or something i'm not a a, a, a big uh, knowledge factor on okay eels. okay mm. i'll have to look mm. that up i may okay. i may i may be making this up you... there may be an imaginary uh, david attenborough in my head <laughs> spitting <laughs> fake animal facts <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do for my episode on animal mating habits i'm gonna do two truths and a lie with you and you have to oh, tell yes. me which one is a lie yes. Yo, you're welcome to come back and be a guest on that episode if you like i would love to <laughs> If you want to like bring your scientific knowledge and you can be part of the guessing committee of like, is Katie lying to me right now? Yes. <laughs> I have a couple of those also. Yeah, that would be fun. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Okay. So Alex, we learned lots of fabulous new things today. What is your favorite thing you learned today? 
well, I, the, the most devastating thing I learned today <laughs> that shattered my world, broke my dreams, and left me shaken is, of course, that sea otters are apparently not nice animals who hold hands and play in the water. Well, they do that as well. They do. But they do. They just, they, their playtime is not PG rated. Uh, no. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently not. I'll have to reevaluate my entire outlook on sea otters. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what about you, Katie? What's what? Uh, what's your favorite takeaway from uh, from today? There's so many. I'm really excited to listen to this episode back, so that I can keep all the fun facts that you've mentioned today. Um, I think the the sea goddess. Because I already really liked nudibranchs, because I, I also go diving, and so I've seen them. I see them all the time, and they're one of the easiest things to spot while diving because they're slow. Um, they don't go anywhere, and they're very colorful. Yes. So learning more about them, and also, like we said, an enthusiasm. If you like a thing, and you learn more about the thing, you like the thing more. Um, Absolutely. So I already liked nudibranchs. Now I really love nudibranchs, the sea <laughs> goddesses. Yes. Excellent. So, Yol, mm? thank you so much for being on this episode. <laughs> thank uh, you so much for inviting it's me. So, it's been so fun. If somebody wanted to learn more about marine animals yeah. and they haven't yet watched all of David Attenborough's stuff. They what, should go and do that. Exactly. That's a good place to start, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what yeah. might be some good resources? Where, where should we send people? Um, you can start uh, down the rabbit hole of marine animals on uh, Oceana. <laughs> So it's O-C-E-A-N-A, -A, so Oceana.org. And then they have like a wonderful uh, overview of all the marine animals. And then you can kind of dive into the different... <laughs> I uh, see what you did, did you there. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> um, and then you can kind of go from there. But otherwise, I mean, just for fun, try and Google weirdest marine animal and you'll just... <laughs> jump into a rabbit hole of fun and i mean yeah you don't need netflix you just start there mm -hmm. and then and then if you come uh, um across the the vampire squid uh, read about that <laughs> <laughs> teaser yes <laughs> like... i think you just assigned our listeners homework <laughs> <laughs> there there will be a test yes <laughs> We can bring uh, Joe back and uh, talk about, uh, yeah, and, and, and quiz people. Yes. <laughs> and if people want to know more about you and your journey, where should we send them? Oh, maybe my Instagram hmm? would be a good thing. It's Joe Goodman Rasmussen. <laughs> Katie's I've looking that up I instantly right pulled now. out my phone. <laughs> I want to see these Galapagos photos that made Alex sad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, her Instagram feed is a lot more bearable now that she's in cold, dark, wintry Denmark. Oh, but just wait until when I start my new job. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have otters? Yes. No. No uh, otters. No, the Blue no. Planet. So the the, Nash, the Danish National Aquarium, they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but not the place where you're going. Nope. Uh, sea lions? Nope. Nope. But seals. Oh, my God, we can have <gasps> seals. seals. And I'm going to start training the seals also so i'm really looking forward <gasps> to that yeah. leopard seals are very fascinating animals definitely but worth seals in to. general are very it's very they're, the, they're yes. the puppies of the ocean let's be honest mm, maybe that's the sea lions okay that's another discussion <laughs> <laughs> tune in next week for the debate yes. <laughs> who claims the title of puppies of the ocean yes <laughs> So, dear listener, uh, what did you learn about marine animals in this episode? Are you ready for next week's quiz? There will be a quiz. Uh, what do you think is the weirdest marine animal and what animal trait would you like to have yourself? Go on our website at electricenthusiasm.com or our Instagram at electricenthusiasm and tell us all about it. And now, dear listener, go be like yo, quit your job and follow your enthusiasms. I promise it'll lead to awesomeness. Ha <laughs> ha